Hi, this is Jim in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we're going to talk about building a Gothic greenhouse. The first step is to build the lofting floor uh, upon which to build the arches. The, uh, if you have a wooden floor, that's great. If you don't, you need to build one. Uh, for a 12-foot wide greenhouse, you need at least a 12-foot by 4-foot lofting floor. I'm going to make mine out of two sheets of plywood. I didn't see any reason to cut one in half, so mine's going to be uh, 4 by 16. And the way I'm going to build it is by taking three 8-foot studs and attaching them uh, underneath the piece of plywood to lift the plywood up off the floor. Here you can see one corner of, a, of a, my first uh, sheet of plywood with the stud underneath. I'll zoom out here and you get to see the whole thing. So there it is. So the three studs are underneath and here I've laid out the next three studs. Just roughly I'll lay the sheet of plywood on it and then uh, nail it or screw it down. I'm going to use the plywood for something else later so I'm using screws instead of staples or nails. The, uh, I'm also going to use the studs later uh, to make the end wall so uh, this is just a, a temporary activity. The uh, center stud, it doesn't exactly have to be in the center, it's just uh, supporting the middle of the plywood. To complete the uh, uh, lofting floor, I put these cleats in to hold the two sheets of plywood together. So now they're butted. So to lay out the uh, uh, bows, I, I snapped a chalk line the length of the 16 feet of the plywood. I came in about 6 inches. Uh, just so I have some working room on both sides, but you can't come in too far um, because uh, you need to bend the bow out. I also marked up, uh, started at six inches up with my measurements so that I uh, would have some room in this lower corner here. You can see a, a mark, uh, a sharpie mark there. So I measured up uh, four feet ten plus six inches and made a mark, so that would be 64 inches. And then using this framing square, made a perpendicular line out. In the case of the 12 foot bow, that's uh, uh, 20 inches. And so I now have a mark out there at the end of 20 inches uh, that's uh, perpendicular to the line, to the chalk line, and then out 20 inches. Chalk line along here that I can line the edge of this board up with to get these two straight. And I'm just sort of centering them on a block. Looks like this. I already drilled two holes. First one goes in like this, it has to go all the way in that socket. And as you pull it, it wants to pull out. So you have to keep pressure this way. At least I have mean, a lot of pressure on this thumb pushing that way until this hits here. So here there's a screw right here that's helping, and then this block back here. I have a hard time getting much bend in this piece, but it seems to work okay. And I have to put together another one for the outer. Maybe the both of these. Put 
that. Remember I left that uh, corner available. I'm using locking nuts. It turned out at Lowe's the buying the locking nuts was cheaper than buying regular nuts and lock washers. And actually it seems like a better solution. So problem with the carriage bolts uh, gripping the top here, uh, but So I got tired of uh, putting two pieces of uh, the lath together to make a 12 footer so I took a 12 foot 2 by 6 and cut 3 quarter inch strips off of it. I could have used a 2 by 4, I just happened to have a 2 by 6 around. Uh, and I've been surprised at how well it works. This, so this is two 3 quarter inch by 12 foot strips off of a 2 by 6. Uh, I have also changed my drilling technique and uh, that seems to have uh, stopped the problems with breaking the blocks. So I'll go in a little closer. So what I'm going to do is angle, I've increased the length of the drill bit and I'm going to angle the, the uh, one sort of from the high going in at an angle and one a little lower going in at an angle and then opposite on the other side. So this is at the uh, top of the arch. You can see the red line that runs from the other end. And you want this block to be in line. This is going to get cut off at a, uh, in this case because it's a 12 foot greenhouse. Uh, it's going to get cut off at 53 degrees. Uh, the bolt has to go in low enough that the saw is not going to hit it when it gets cut off. And you can't put any screws in this end until uh, uh, until you cut it off, so you know where the where the saw is going to go through. Oops! Again, the bolts have to go in from the uh, outside.
has to be attached. It's in two halves so that the when the uh, when the ridge uh, two ridge pieces come together, they can just be screwed in. But this allows us to uh, screw the the uh, the ridge board in without toenailing. I'll show you that, and you can see by the way I'm angling the screws that I'm trying to um, get as much meat uh, in the boards below, even though they're at an angle. So for an outside application, you'd build a frame out of two by sixes that would be 12 feet wide and eight feet long for this uh, or as many bows as you're gonna have on four foot centers. So you can see that frame. Uh, it's not, uh, there's two by fours in the front here rather than two by sixes, but that's just because I'm building it in the shop as a prototype. Uh, and then the bows, after they were connected uh, to their individual ridge rails, are, uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that, the two halves are then joined together and then screwed through the side between the two boards are screwed together from both sides. The next step is to add these horizontal purlins. Uh, I started uh, with the first block and then every other block all the way up. You can see that there are these purlins running the length of it. There's a uh, can't, can't really see that one there. Yeah, there you can. There's four, four purlins. The purlins are on uh, both sides. So there's a one, two, three, four. The uh, rigid cross bracing is added. Next, and that uh, I just jammed into the. corner right there and then uh, came up to this end uh, sorry I put a put a uh, bar clamp on this joint and then got this one lined up and put two screws in and came back and put the screws in here and down in the corner and then it was touching right there at that joint and also touching at this joint, and so I just uh, went ahead and put screws in there too. It's now very rigid. So I'm putting in rafter ties across, as you can see here, like that. And so the way I'm doing that is uh, I have uh, put a screw in. There you can see it, if it gets into focus. Then I'm gonna lay a board up there, which I've measured the length of, and I'll screw, put one screw in the other end and then come back and get this end. Uh, so, oh, just a second. So there I've put one screw in. Uh, I didn't bother to measure the height of it. If the blocks are put in correctly, uh, it should be really close, and after all, this is a farm building. So, I'll finish it up and show you. So to make the uh, door opening, I uh, cut a 2x4, measured the length of it by just setting it up uh, at this intersection right here and I know that that's a 45 degree angle so I just marked it, the, marked it right here and then just cut it off at a 45 degree angle. I then attached one screw, boy sorry for that light, one screw right here and then I'm going to take a level, oops sorry, right there, and then I'm going to take a level and uh, um, make it plumb and then I'll just screw it in down here at the bottom to the ledger board and do the same thing on the other side. So here's the completed greenhouse. The doors were made out of 1x4 pine with plywood gussets. It took me about two days to make this greenhouse. should be the same for you. I intend to cover it with 6mm uh, clear poly plastic. Enjoy. Jim Hensel, Portland, Oregon.